Hello and welcome to 96 Indie, where the goal is to provide DIY tips for music makers and content creators. I go by the name of Joe Rodriguez, and we're here today to talk about using Waves Factory Cassette Transport in Studio One to create music intros and outros, which is what I've been using this plugin for. This plugin helps you create tape stop and tape start effects. So let's get straight into the step by step. So what I start with when I create my music intros and outros is a stereo track, a stereo full on song essentially is what I've been using. And the first thing that I typically do is I keep your eyes on cut out sections, 15 second sections is what I've been using. So that's what I'm looking to do here. Got my 15 second mark marked, and I just wanna cut my first portion right there. Good, cool. So typically what I do for my outro is I'll take the, the back end of the song and the actual outro of the song. And then what I'm gonna do here is just listen to my tail, see when it, see when the song finishes decaying more or less and then take it from there. Okay, so I heard it finish decaying right around here. So we'll chop that end off, get rid of that. And then I'm gonna snap to the end of the section here. And that's gonna be where I count my 15 seconds from the end. So that was 35, which means the passage of my I'm gonna wanna land at around 20. I'll turn my snapping off here. Cool. So that works for me, 15 seconds or so. And then I can ripple delete to end up where I want to end up at. And then I'll give myself a little bit of space here. Maybe a little bit more. Cool. So now we have the two sections that I'm going to be working with to create my intro and outro. Now that we've got those carved out, Let's uh, start thinking about putting cassette transport into the mix. So before I actually insert the plugin, one thing I do want to do because I want to get some of the sound effects from cassette transport into the final product. I'll just move everything over to the right a little bit, give myself a little bit of headroom to do so. Cool. So we'll go with that. And then we're going to insert cassette transport. So here we go. Here's the plugin. And we're going to start thinking about automation at this point. I like to fine tune my effects when I do them. So it's going to take some automation to work with cassette transport. Definitely going to take some work, a little bit of experimentation, but we'll get there. Okay, so like I said, here's the plugin. What I do want to do is I want to toggle my switches from sync to free. I've learned that I do not have luck whatsoever using the sync setting, either for the playtime or the stop time for cassette transport. I don't know if it's just a Studio One thing or what, but anytime I flick into sync, it doesn't matter what value I pick. It just does not take. What always takes is my free value. And that's whether or not I have sync ticked. So even if I had my playtime for free here and I had my playtime for sync here and I tried to make the effect happen over, let's say, a 16th note, then I would still be getting five seconds instead, more or less. So I'm not sure why that is, but 
it is what it is and I have to freehand it when I create my music intros and outros. So I usually start with uh, about three seconds, depending on what uh, effect I'm trying to make happen. But in this case, I'm trying to make my tape stop effect happen first and foremost. So I'll do that to around three seconds or so just to set my first static level. So free, free, and my stop time at about three seconds. My play time can be pretty much instantaneous. I'm cool with that. And that's my basics. So now that I have my basics set up, I'm gonna wanna start thinking about automation. In order to show your automation lanes in Studio One, you just need to right click your track and tick show hide automation so that your automation lanes are selectable at that point. Next thing I need to do is add parameters from the actual plugin. So stop, play, and bypass are what I'm looking to add. Let's go ahead and add that. And now I'll be able to manipulate these parameters in my automation lanes. So the first thing I wanna think about is my play button in cassette transport or with cassette transport inserted on your track. You're not gonna hear any audio in your track no matter what you do unless your play button is engaged and your cassette transport plugin is active. So the first thing I wanna do is make sure that my play button is locked into off at the beginning of the session. And then I do want to engage my play button right around when the track actually starts. Give myself a little bit of headroom right there and draw a node maybe right around here. And now we can hear our, we heard our switch engage and we heard our rotor or we're hearing our rotor. So I wanna mess with the volume a little bit. That sounds about good to me. And then I'll kick this down to around 20% as well. Now we're starting to see what the plugin can do. So that's something that not every tape stop, tape start effect tool has. Switches volume and rotor volume. It's definitely a cool little flavor that you can add with cassette transport specifically. Cool. So with that all engaged, the next thing I want to do is kick in my stop automation. So I don't want stop to be engaged at the beginning of the session. So I'm turning it off, drawing my node right there. But what I do want to have happen is I want my stop button to engage around three seconds from this point previous in the timeline. So Recommend living. around 14 seconds. Cool. And then my stop time is pretty much three seconds precisely. So that works for me. Maybe I'll trim it down to almost, almost three seconds. Cool. Good to go. And then I want to, once again, engage my stop button here. That way, that's where my actual tape stop effect is going to happen. So I think we're good there. What I do want to do next is just ensure that uh, I have a little, a little fade here to make sure that I don't create a click at the end of my effect. So let's do, I don't know, 500 milliseconds maybe. Let's try that out, see how that sounds eventually. Mm, maybe I'll go a little bit more conservative, go about 250 milliseconds, somewhere around there. Cool, so at this point, we should theoretically be able to try this out. So let's do it. Life is a journey. Nobody takes the ride the whole way through, but you. 
as such, I recommend living life on the job. Cool. So that sounded good to me. So music intro taken care of at this point. Next thing we want to do is create our music outro. And to do that, typically what I've been doing is creating another instance of cassette transport and automating that as well, just because this is the way I've seen it be able to work, essentially. You know, I've tried to experiment, tried other ways, and this seems to be the only way that I can make everything happen on the same track, which is what I like to do. To me, it's a little bit cleaner. So that's what we're going to do here. And in order to do this, we're going to have to think about this first instance, because again, going back to we're not going to hear anything through the track if you're unless your play button is engaged for the instance of cassette transport that you're going to use. So if I drop in another cassette transport and the stop button is engaged on that one, then it's going to pretty much cancel out this instance of cassette transport. And the same goes the other way around. So once this first instance of cassette transport engages the stop button around here, like we did for the effect, then it would cancel out this second instance of cassette transport that I'm about to drop in. So in order to make that not happen, I need to bypass my first instance of the plugin before I get to utilizing my second instance of the plugin. So let's do that first and foremost. All right, cool. So now bypass is not engaged. And then once we finish, you know, this first little clip, then we can engage the bypass. I don't need anything to happen in between here regardless. So now once we get past this node, this instance of cassette transport is bypassed and that's what we want. So now we can get rid of that one and we can set up uh, another instance. Great. So with this one, we're going to have to do similar things, uh, but I want to make sure everything is consistent. So I'll just go ahead and get my volume to around the same levels. I probably could have copied and pasted in some form or fashion, but for some reason, my brain chose not to go that route. Cool. So in this case, I want my play time to be about three seconds to start with. Because we're going to do a tape start effect in this particular case. And my stop time can be instantaneous. Cool. So now we have all the basics set up. Switch is set to free. Got my switches volume and my rotor volume where I want it to be at. I have my stop time where I want it to be at. Have my playtime where I want it to be at. Good. So, similar to the first instance of the plugin, we're going to need to add our parameters for automation. So, stop, play, bypass once again, add that in, and there we have it. Those are going to be pink. Cool. So, with that in mind, since it's giving me the bypass lane already and I want everything to work with both instances of the plugin, I'll just go ahead and knock out the bypass automation for the second instance of the plugin. So at the beginning of the session, I want the second instance of the plugin to be bypassed. And then before I get to this clip, I want the bypass to disengage. So we'll go, I don't know, right around here. I think that's a little bit further than the previous automation node, if I'm not mistaken. And I can just double check that real quick. Yes. Good. So cool. So now when I get over here to this node, then the second instance of the plugin will be not bypassed. Good. Takes care of that. Next up, we'll go ahead and do our stop for this instance of the plugin. So we want our stop to be engaged from the beginning of the session for this instance of the plugin and then i'm just going to leave it at that because the play is essentially going to cancel it out once i set up the play automation so let's go ahead and do that all right here's my play automation for this 
Now, I want the play button to not be engaged to begin with from the beginning of the session for this instance of the plugin. And then I want my play button to engage pretty much right when this clip starts. Good. So I got it all locked in. And then I want to draw my node. Maybe I'll keep snapping on so I can just draw my node in and keep it locked in right there. Good. So now my play is going to kick in here. So the next thing we need to do is dial it in essentially. And this is all going to be experimenting with the playtime knob. So we are going to now just listen to it and adjust as we go. I recommend landing on either a downbeat, a kick and or the beginning of a word because once the effect ends, the tape start effect ends, the track is going to kick into its normal tempo and it's going to be immediate. It's not going to like melt into wherever you're at in the track. So you need to land on the right spot. So let's just uh, play it and see how it sounds and go from there. Okay, so let's mess with that a bit. Let's try to move it a little bit later in time. See how that sounds. I feel like I'm not ending up before the word crash, so I'm just going to dial it back to make the effect end earlier. Okay, so now I'm getting too early. I want to bring it a little bit, just ever so slightly later. I think that's going to do it, honestly. I'm good with that. So now that we got that dialed in, the next thing we need to do, similar to how we did with the previous effect, is... Turn my automation display off and drop my little fade in there. I did 250 milliseconds on the previous one. And this is just so, you know, I did it here and I did it here to not create a click either when I'm ending my effect or starting my effect. Just to smooth things out a little bit. So this should do it if I'm not mistaken. Let's bring it back to the beginning, beginning. And engage my stop button on cassette transport. That way when I play, everything should happen the way I set up the automation. Life is a journey. Nobody takes the ride the whole way through. But you, as such, I recommend living life on the job. Great. So now we're good to go with all that. The last thing I need to do, I'm going to have to do manually in a sense, because for some reason, you know, cassette transport taps out on how friendly it works with automation once you do a certain amount of nodes. So it's kind of like for this instance, I get the, I get the one effect for this instance, I get the one effect. But if I try to do much more than that, then cassette transport doesn't really want to work with me. So we're going to work around that. We're going to create a new track and Hey, let's call it final. What a great idea. Audio count one color. That's fine. Stereo. Great. And then I want the input of the track to be the track that I have everything situated on and we'll create that track. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solo this track. That way we only hear the output of one track and then I'm going to set this track to record so I can print everything down. And before I get too excited, I'm going to make sure I have my second instance of cassette transport handy and then I can get rid of my mixer. That way I can see everything. Cool. Let's press record.
Life is a journey and Nobody takes the ride the whole way through But you As such, I recommend living life on the job Yeah, my journey, I've been crashed my car once, I didn't like it Since then I've had my hand on the wheel Infinitely better, that's how it feels Cool, and there we have it, there's our recording We can take it off of there We can pretty much mute this track at this point Because we're all set with this track and then we could just clean things up a little bit with my split tool. So more or less like that is what we want to do. Match it up. Get rid of that. Similar deal here. Trim that down. Trim that down. And last but not least, all right, so now we got everything trimmed down and this is it, one and two, music intro, music outro. So I hope this was insightful in terms of how to use Studio One, and Waves Factory in conjunction to create music intros and outros. Thank you for tuning in to 96 Indie. Once again, I go by the name of Joe Rodriguez. And as always, this is not the only way to do things. This is the way I do things. And I hope it helps you to improve your workflow. I will catch you guys next time.